<laughs> well, you know, I also want to introduce my co-host here, uh, Roy Dykeman, who also comes from the same era. Roy, you want to say hi? Yeah, good evening, hi, Roy. Michael Parks. Roy Dykeman hi, Roy. here, and uh, I know that feeling of uh, wanting to ride Route 66 and uh, the freedom of just being able to go. Yeah, it was a dream to me like it was to the audience. Well, from Tim Hansen, we got another email, and Tim said, how do you feel about then came Bronson back then when you were doing it each week? And when you look back on it 38 years later, do you have the same feelings or are things different now? You look oh, at it I differently. Oh, I could be very particular and describe things that, you know, that weren't right. But uh, mm -hmm. a good example is he, he would have never, for me, would never have stopped at a uh, demolition derby. Right. So, I mean, there are things, I mean, there were some writers that, you know, wrote just the week before I'd written a, a flying nun. But they're in the writer's pool, so they pick that one, and he writes the Bronson. Now, they, those are two different shows. Yeah, absolutely. I think. You know, it's, it's been said by some people on, on the different websites, Michael, that uh, the Sportster probably wasn't your choice no, but, for a but bike in the series. Now, we're not knocking any brand, especially Harley-Davidson, because they're a big sponsor of this show. But And we also want to point out that you own a 70s, uh, mid-70s or early 70s shovel head, so you're not a stranger to Harley-Davidson. Yeah. You know, yeah, but if you had a choice of bikes back then when you were calling the shots in the show and you could call your shot, what bike do you think you would have picked? I could have called the shot. Okay. That's the point I'm making. I mean, I'm the one that had, had them hire Bud. I knew, but I bought my first new bike from Bud. That was a Triumph then? Yeah, 650. Yeah, yeah he was a Triumph dealer for yeah, years. 64, yeah, right on Ventura Boulevard. You know, and we're going to get into Bud here in another question or uh, two. What a but, beauty. Oh, yeah. Now, well, if you we were to fast forward now and say they were going to put this show back on and they were going to have you be the lead again, what bike would you be riding now? I need a three-wheeler. <laughs> Stop it. Come on, man. Now, why don't you tell me, if you had a choice, though, nowadays. I love this, the, the, the Triumph 650. I like the, the Beamer, you know. I like the... Oh, my God, that's what Roy rides, Beamers. <laughs> well, you know, if you if you did... Uh, there are some great Hondas there. You know, to me, it's the horse that gets you there. Yep. And if that's the horse you have to ride, the ride's still sweet. Hey, Amen. There Amen. you go. It's it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's the journey. Absolutely. No, it really truly is. You know, many of the stunts were done by Bud Eakins, who recently passed away. And believe me, all, everybody in motorcycling is going to miss him. This guy was like a legend. I mean, he did the stunts for you. He did all the stunts for McQueen and, and all the different things he did. And including that, the jump and the great escape that everybody said, oh, Steve McQueen did it when, you know, jumping that barbed wire fence was, was Bud. What was it like working with him? That, it's like Ben Johnson said about um, John Wayne when he died. He said, uh, if, he, if he told you it was Christmas, you could hang up your stocking. <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way Bud was. We had a lot of laughs. If it wasn't for Bud... I wouldn't have had half the laughs I had on that show. Man, what a rider. Oh, God, yeah. Four gold good. medals in the ISDT, oh, International that's... Trials in East Germany. Brother, too, was a good rider, you know. Yeah, yeah, Dave. Yeah, he absolutely. Busted, he busted his Baja record once, and but got it back. Mm-hmm. Everything from the Big Bear to the Catalina, you name it, he had a stamp on it. And he was the least competitive of them that I know. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I mean, Eddie Mulder and a one shot on a Bronson going down the hill. His kid's in his way, and it's a choreograph. It's supposed to, these guys supposed to be head. He's usually when he kicked the guy off the track. You know what? Funny. He kicked the guy right off the track going down the hill. It's funny, because I had he, Eddie he, Mulder he on. on film. Yeah. He said, Eddie, he said, Eddie's in my way. You know, I think I got to. I know. <laughs> we had Eddie Motor on la uh, a year ago, and uh, you're oh. right. He is competitive, boy, I'll tell he you. He is, and, he's, and you know, he, he does his work, and then he sleeps in the back of the pickup. Like the old days, huh? Yeah, it just falls down in his outfit, doesn't get it. Michael, let me ask you this. Would you mind if we stepped away, paid a couple of bills for about a minute and a half, and then we'll come right back to you? What percentage do I get? Uh, we'll give you all we got. Uh, you liar, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're listening to the Two Wheel Power Hour. We're interviewing Michael Parks from Then Came Bronson fame and a host of others. Uh, we're going to step away, pay some bills, and when we come back, we'll have Michael on again.
If you're looking to score a 105th anniversary model, you better get to Warren Harley Davidson right now. This is the last chance because when they're gone, they're gone, but they have a few for immediate delivery. If you're living the bar and shield lifestyle, then sign up for the Warren Harley Gram, an email blast right from Warren Harley Davidson announcing events, sales, and one of a kind specials. Stop in today and sign up for the Harley Gram. And while you're there, check out the 2008 models, including the Dark Series. Warren Harley Davidson, 330 395 4700. 105th anniversary models are limited to units on hand. 570 WKBN. Today we salute you, Mr. Fantasy Football Manager Guy. Every year you assemble your closest friends to prepare for another season in the knockdown, drag out world of make believe football. Four finishes! Imaginary catches, imaginary touchdowns. Next up, an imaginary score with an imaginary woman. Good imagination! So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, oh swami of the sidelines. Fantasy football! Bud Light beer, and I yeah. Columbus, Ohio. The CBR 600 F4I from Honda. From any the CBR 600 F4i from Honda. For many sports bike fans, this will always be the legendary 600 class sport machine. And right now, during the good to go sales event, all you need is the Honda card and you get your own CBR 600 F4i with low payments and a straight deal. So if you want the sport bike that's a legend, you're good to go. Come to Andrews Cycles Route 62 in Salem, Ohio. Special financing available for well qualified buyers on 2008 and prior year models. Not all buyers can qualify. See Andrews Cycles for complete program today. Our friends made 2008. All righty, we are back on 570 WKBN's two-wheel power hour, truly the Mac Daddy of the motorcycle shows. It's the fastest hour on the radio, the most with the best. And again, we join Michael Parks. He is live, and I think it's Santa Monica, California. Am I correct? Of course not. Of course not. It's <laughs> San Fernando Valley. San Fernando Valley. The old Gene Autry too. Many of the innovations came from the from making then came Bronson, and one of them was the tricycle mobile camera from Lamar Boren, and then another one was the 35-foot mobile picture studio, and I hope I get this guy's name right, Fouad Saad, was the guy Fouad that... Fouad Saeed. Fouad Saeed, okay. Uh, How did those innovations help make TCB better? Uh, compact. Okay. Uh, one of the demands I made before I started the series was that we had four shows per location. And uh, so you had to go compact and, and set up, and it was done much easier with that. You can travel. You take it up the hill if you need a you know, light. Had a big generator. Wonderful guy, Fouad. Hmm. You know, one of the segments was called the Spitball Kid. With... And the, the tricycle thing. Oh, and it was good. all put together by Bud. Oh, it was. Ekism would do all of that stuff for them, you know, and everything came from a factory. We did everything right there on the road. It was our location. Where was so all... it, it? Well, put it together, you know. Well. Yeah. And where was most of the stuff shot? Like uh, in Colorado? No, we were in like six states, seven states. We really? Wyoming for a month. Uh, that's where I worked with Keenan. Well, this tricycle mobile camera, uh, uh, to me, helped get some of the action shots down a lot better and make it more realistic uh, so that it was intertwined with the show. And, and just, I think, the whole thing, the continuity, was, was so much better with some of these innovations. Yeah, sure. And, and a lot of input was, uh, was from, um, oh, my God, his name is Casey, the wonderful Hugh Grenier. Okay. French, French, he was a cameraman. He was the other cameraman on the show. It was, he was second camera to Lamar. If somebody went behind the big one, he, it had to be him. Hmm. You, you know what I mean? Sure do. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the other two guys were Jim Glennon and um, Carl, uh, his last name in a minute, wonderful both. I got one of them promoted <laughs> to camera on the show. It was hard to do. We worked it out, Lamar and I, over months and months. He said, let's get in a place where we absolutely need... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay. And so we got there, and so they otherwise they'd have to fly one in. Oh. So we were we were in the mountains of Big Sur. Yeah. On the Oppenheimer Ranch. 